Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. The bravest thing you will ever do is love again. Most importantly, love yourself. Today, we hear of the best medicine for a shattered heart, self-love. Today's OP leads by example. Served her at the hotel they were sleeping in. Hello guys, I hope you all are doing well. This is a pretty long and messed up story. Sorry for any errors as I am writing on my phone. I've come to the end of my rope and have no idea how to navigate this mess. A bit of background. I, male 33, and my significant other, female 40, have been married for 16 years. We have two kids, a 14-year-old daughter and a 9-year-old son. Our marriage was very rocky in the beginning, but we made it through those tough years and had come out much better from it. We married young, so maturity wasn't all there yet, but we knew we loved each other and could conquer any obstacle that comes between our marriage. I'm still not sure whether this was wishful thinking. Anyway, my wife is a manager of a very big advertisement company for three years, and I'm in engineering, seven years. Both our jobs pay well and gave our family a pretty good lifestyle. We were a very tight-knit family. We always made sure as parents that we were there for our kids to create great memories. No matter how busy we got, we always made time for our kids. Honestly, I consider myself a good dad and husband. I messed up sometimes when it came to my wife, but I did anything for this woman, and it honestly shocked me to my core when I found out that she was in a long-term affair. Which brings me to discovery. Wife was acting distant. In fact, the last two years before this one were the hardest. She just didn't seem to like anything I did. She kept comparing me to her boss, yes, I know now, and would always tell me how he would handle this or that. Can't read her mind? Well, her boss can. Don't take initiative to take her out on dates and make her feel special? Well, her boss does that for his wife. Why was I so immature? I would ask what she wanted me to do to spice up our love life. Her answer usually is, don't ask, you need to already know and do it. So I researched, bought books. You know, since I was clueless, someone else had to have the answer. Anything I attempted was met with either half-hearted appreciation or bitter disappointment. My wife was never like this in the years I've known her, so I thought that inability to make her happy was something I seriously needed to fix. Little did I know, it wasn't me who was doing the fixing this entire time. We were very close to her boss and his wife. They also have kids, and the kids loved each other. We brought them to our barbecues, family outings to the park, game days to the arcade. They have been to our house numerous times, and we've been to theirs. It's no surprise that we became close. I would confide in her boss about our marital problems. He gave me good advice. I thought he was a swell guy. Anyway, back to the discovery. I had grown emotionally tired from wife's demands to better myself or the marriage was done. I was honestly shocked with her attitude because before all this, I thought we had a great marriage. So one night, she was busy laughing and giggling while texting someone. I was next to her in bed and was curious. The moment I leaned my head to take a peek, she viciously pulled away from me. She was angry instantly, asking me what I was doing. I told her I wanted to see what the joke was, and she told me it was none of my business and retreated to the bathroom. I think that's the day when I just knew deep down that there was an affair of sorts going on. I did not have proof though. I made the mistake of asking her directly the next day. She was furious and denied any wrongdoing. I did not have access to her phone, but I wanted the truth terribly. I asked for her phone and she refused. Only later, during the night, did she grudgingly give me the phone. Almost every text message she sent to specific people were deleted. I could tell because some conversations seemed inconsistent and others downright ridiculous. I gave the phone back and we did not speak of it until a month later when I was able to get a buddy on it to check the phone and recover deleted texts. My wife had gotten another phone prior and hardly used the one she handed to me. Some texts were recovered and it was through bits and pieces that I finally had proof that there was an affair going on, and you already guessed it, with her boss. I just knew if I confronted her then and there, she would find some way to weasel out of it. So I bid my time. I was a wreck though. All I could think about is how it was going to affect the kids. The situation was horrible, and I cried in front of my buddy. I still did not want to give up the marriage, so three days later I bought a How to Help Your Spouse Heal from an Affair. It's okay if you're shaking your head. I started reading, hoping that if I gave it to my wife, she would stop this nonsense. I wanted my wife back, and I wanted to save the marriage. I had planned on talking to her on that Saturday to work things out, but she had told me they had an emergency at work and not to wait up on her. Of course, I contacted the workplace on the day to confirm the story she gave me and received no answer. They were not open on Saturdays. I tried her phone, but no answer. She came back home at 2 in the morning on Sunday and immediately showered, and then came to bed. 
I asked why she was late and she dodged the question by saying that she already told me not to wait for her. I was sick of this. I did not give her the book I bought. I was suffering and she didn't care. She saw me suffering and didn't care. I contacted her boss's wife to find out from her if she knew anything. I was so desperate for stability and to this day, I don't regret doing that. She was as shocked as I was when finding out. She wanted to confront her husband, but I told her he will probably lie and try to hide it better like my wife did. We met at her house to discuss what was going on and I gave her the little proof that we had. She wanted more evidence, so we both decided to gather evidence on each of our sides and compare them. I started snooping on my wife more and she did the same with her husband. It was very easy on her end to find undeniable proof. Her husband was so arrogant that he didn't even delete the texts on his phone between him and my wife and the little texts I found earlier finally made sense and we had a whole picture of how long the affair was. Two years. The boss's wife was livid and so was I. She wanted to get revenge on them and so did I. They slept together everywhere. Her house, my house, expensive hotels, business trips. It was sickening to read all that. They even sent each other pics. But we decided to ignore the pics because we didn't want to scar ourselves with the images. We wanted revenge, but not an affair ourselves. We both decided that if they wanted each other, they can have each other. We both drew divorce papers at around the same time. We were dead set on it. Our spouses didn't know that we knew and we acted our part. By the time our ducks were in a row, they were at it again. This time, through collaborating with Boss's wife, we knew exactly where and how they were going to be served. We knew which hotel they booked for their weekend of fun. I personally went there with the sheriff. I waited in the lobby as the sheriff got everything working and my wife was called to come down from her room. She did, dressed in a bathrobe, and I fear nothing else. She's panicking, frantically asking me what I was doing there. It was at quite a distance from our home, but not too far. The sheriff asked for confirmation of her name and information. She confusedly answered in the affirmative and was served. It was very satisfying seeing the shocked look on her face. But I did not want to rub it in, so I decided to walk away knowing the job was done. She didn't let me and was holding my arm, pulling me back and demanding to know what was the meaning of this. I told her you had an affair and I'm leaving you. Simple. She started screaming at me and pulling my arm hard. The sheriff had to step in and tell her to release me at once. She did so and started crying, telling me she can explain. I have the wrong idea. It's my fault. I was getting very angry, so I left quickly to get home. My wife told her boss and he panicked. From what I was told, he rushed home only to be served there. We did not give them time to get their heads on straight. We blindsided them just like they did us. My divorce will be finalized in a couple of months. Hers might be taking a bit longer. Both my wife and her boss have been fighting us on the divorces. Neither wants to get divorced. The excuse that I hear is that they never intended to leave their spouses. It was a purely sexual affair, nothing more. People have worse affairs and still come out with a great marriage. They effed up and would like to, a chance to uneff the situation. I have asked my wife what she thought the outcome of all this was. She said she was going to go with the flow and acted completely out of character. She is not that person anymore. I told her she's an idiot. People around me are calling me evil for not giving my wife another chance. My kids know what's going on, age appropriate, and they are behind me 100%, but would like it if we stayed together. My resolve is slipping, coupled by the fact that we still live in the same house and my wife is going to therapy and reading the book I bought. It's getting harder to stick to my guns. She said she's remorseful and will do whatever it takes. All I tell her is that she's sorry she got caught and that's all I need to know. She's called me a bitter, resentful person who can't look past all the negativity. She apologized for it later, but I know that's how she feels. The boss's wife and I still talk and my wife absolutely hates that. She thinks I'm going to have a revenge affair or her boss's wife is the reason I will not give us another chance. She has asked me repeatedly to initiate no contact with her boss's wife, just like she did with her boss. I told her she's crazy. We didn't do anything wrong and why should I respect your opinions now? See, I think I'm done. I have no respect for her. She still doesn't want to give up and is actively trying to engage with me about her thoughts and processes to her affair. I see them as excuses, so I don't entertain her. She wants me to do therapy with her. I read many places where the therapist blames the victim, so I was like, hell no. She wants me to read infidelity books with her. What is the point if we're going to divorce anyway? She wants to be intimate. I told her she was not going to manipulate me with sex. She says it's not manipulation, and she just wants to show me how much she loves me. I corrected and said, love me now, you mean. People around me are frustrated with me, even my mom, because they say people make mistakes and my wife realizes through her mistakes that she truly does love me. I told people that I will never be anyone's fallback plan. I feel very bad for treating her the way I do. I still love her even though there's hate there. Am I being unnecessarily cruel to her? 
She's trying really hard, but I just don't care. Should I reconsider the divorce? People are saying I'm moving too quickly and I'll regret it. Is that true? I don't know what's real and what's not. Edit. Thank you all for taking the time to respond to my situation. I have read all your comments and some of you touched on important subjects and I will have a discussion with my wife in a moment. I will keep you updated, but I think divorce is really the best route for me and the kids. Reading here has helped. Let's get a quick community reaction before moving on with an update. Molson5972 says, A mistake is spelling a word wrong or calling John Jim. Having a two-year emotional and physical affair behind your back and in your home is a betrayal, plain and simple. She didn't make a mistake. She betrayed you, and that is what I would answer to anyone who said she made a mistake. She didn't take you into consideration for the last two years. Your relationship with her for that time was a lie, since you were never given the agency to make a decision to stay or go as a consequence of her actions. Stick to your guns. This wasn't a one-time thing. She lied to you daily by hiding this affair. She lied to your face, even when you knew the truth. The time and effort she put in toward the boss should have been put towards you. It sounds like she took you for granted all these years. The marriage you knew was over. Divorce her, and from there, decide if you can restart a relationship with her or not. Update. Okay, I'm back again. I'm trying for the second time because I've been getting email after email asking me for an update. Thanks for your concern, guys. I understand your curiosity, and I'd like to clear up a few things. Firstly, my wife and I are in a sort of good place right now. It is not because we are reconciling. No, I'm still divorcing her. The last update I posted, which was taken down by the auto mod, explained in great detail our situation. The short version is my wife is still begging for another chance and is doing whatever it takes to get it. I will not give it to her because her affair was way too long for me to get over. If it had been a one night stand, that would be a different story. But no, two years is just a slap in the face. I have gone to a few therapy sessions with her because I'm not a monster and I still love her. One session was very good and made me understand that my wife is actually remorseful. She has not been perfect with how she handled the fallout of her affair, but she has been trying pretty dang hard. Second session was a mess of her upset at me for continuously contacting the boss's wife and her being afraid of a revenge affair. It was the angriest I ever was through this whole mess and we did argue a great deal later because I refused to do what she wanted, which is no contact with the boss's wife. That was resolved when I promised her that there will be no revenge affair. I know I don't owe her anything, but she's still my wife until our divorce and I want to hold true to my commitments. I have been going to a few more sessions with her just to see her progress. Yes, this therapist is an individual and marriage therapist. No, I'm not going to these sessions because deep down I want to save our marriage. I want to see my wife's progress myself. Participate if I have to. After the divorce, I will step away gracefully. The boss's wife is still leaving her husband. Her husband is still fighting her on the divorce. She is as adamant as I am and I will admit we do confide in each other when we have low days. I still do not see any affair happening. We are just on friendly terms with each other. That's all. She is a strong and independent woman who takes no BS from anyone. My kids are fine. They know just because we're divorcing doesn't mean we love them any less. They don't want a divorce, but understand why it's necessary for us in an age-appropriate manner. My wife doesn't work at the advertisement company anymore. She works elsewhere. She resigned shortly after I served her. She has been strictly no contact with her former boss. According to her, she reached out on forums to get help on saving the marriage and used that advice. I've been reading a lot here, and at first I didn't understand why people stayed with adulterers. But after seeing my wife work her butt off to be a better person, I can see the temptation. She's not a monster, she's just flawed and made horrible choices, which she's learning to be better from. She has offered me everything under the sun to be given another chance. I'm not so sure I have it in me. The closer divorce comes to being final, the more at peace I feel. We recently had a long discussion of her asking to have a chance after divorce. She has offered a post-nup? I was not completely opposed to it actually, but it would be a very, very long road for her to travel for me to even consider it a possibility. She seems quite willing, but I don't see how that would benefit any of us. To be honest, a huge part of me wants this divorce out of a fleeting sense of justice. It's the only justice I can get without lowering myself to an adulterer. My mom and I made up after I revealed more about my wife's affair, although now she's absolutely furious with my wife after learning the details. I don't know how to navigate that one. Update. Rant. Revenge affair. Okay. I didn't want to write here until my divorce was finalized, but I'm just pissed off today and really want to vent. As many of you know, my wife is scared crazy about a revenge affair. Simple reason is because I'm still in contact and see the other woman she betrayed. My wife is very insecure compared to the other betrayed spouse. Is that how it's spelt? Other betrayed spouse is younger, a model, very attractive, and owns a successful business. 
It makes my wife paranoid that I will give in to temptation and cheat on her as revenge. I still cannot believe the nerve of her to give me the two wrongs don't make a right speech. Of course, she isn't wrong and I don't intend to ever follow through, but her hypocrisy infuriates me. Every time I'm going to visit other betrayed spouse, like yesterday, she gets extremely sad or extremely clingy. I don't know how many times she has thrown herself at me just to make sure that I don't cheat on her back. I reject her attempts and it only makes things worse. It absolutely floors me that cheaters are this selfish, only thinking about themselves and their pain while the betrayed have to trudge along and try to pick up the pieces. Another thing, our kids still see their kids. I never go to other betrayed spouses without my kids. But no, my wife still thinks I have it in me to be as heartless as she was and take the opportunity to bang the woman. Laughable crap. The other man is still living in their holiday home, begging other betrayed spouse to take him back. I'm not going to lie. It brings a sense of great satisfaction to see him suffer the consequences. He has not tried to threaten me because of how much leverage I have on him. He has to deal with the fact that I'm still in contact with his wife. He is allowed to visit his kids anytime he wants, but doesn't want to see me, so he makes sure I'm not around and then visits. I pity the guy, honestly. Currently, my wife has been super apologetic. She has showered me with affection, which I simply brushed off. I'm not in a good place. We are having a therapy session today and I feel like unloading all the pain and hurt I've had to endure because of her. The rage I feel is becoming overwhelming. Let's get one quick community comment from MacManFan. You need to unload in therapy. If you're nearing divorce, why does she still care if you are planning to date? She lost that when she cheated. How selfish to expect your loyalty. She needs intervention level help for her issues. Update. Well, checking in. Nothing really new to report to you guys. There had been a few things that have developed though. Looking through my posts and messages made me realize what a great place this is that gives support to people like us. I have been reading a lot of stuff that concerns infidelity in order to get a better picture of my situation. Anyway, during a recent therapy session with my wife, she requested that I give her a little more time for her to win me back. She had reason after reason why it would be a good idea for me to at least try and see if I could participate in recovering our marriage, not necessarily reconciliation yet. I repeatedly brought up the fact that she was only trying now because of the fallout of her affair. She would never be trying if she was still seeing the other man. She emotionally abused me for months, and I'm not the type of person to get walked all over, even from the woman I loved. She acknowledged all of her wrongdoings and apologized once again. She has given me so many promises of making it up to me. She wants our marriage to grow stronger than ever before, and believes it's possible. I asked her if she was willing to put up with my rage because I have plenty to spare. She was like, absolutely, and she would like me to unload on her whenever I feel like it to help myself process the pain. Usually, when I asked why she had an affair, I get a million excuses. This time, she was forthright and told me there was no excuse for what she did, and she would spend every day for the rest of her life showing me through her actions that she was truly remorseful and would never hurt me that way again. She actually unloaded feelings onto me, and it made me understand a bit that she really was very insecure of herself and jealous of the other betrayed spouse. The affair made her ego skyrocket, and she liked feeling beautiful and desired. She acknowledged that the affair was definitely a fantasy and would never last. She hardly thought about the consequences, but did think about it from time to time. She regrets ever having the affair and says we'll live with this guilt for the rest of her life. She will probably never forgive herself. She told me she could never hold a candle to the other betrayed spouse, and the reason she was so sure I would cheat back is because other betrayed spouse is not only beautiful, but she is a woman with integrity. Not once has other betrayed spouse ever said a mean thing to her or threatened her. It was all my wife's insecurities talking, and maybe the fact that I was angry at her for betraying me. Here's where it gets interesting. The therapist asked me what would it take for me to consider my wife's proposal. Nothing came to mind. I was honest and told her a time machine because what I have now is a sham of a marriage and I never signed up for it. She told me all marriages face problems from ranging from infidelity to death. It's how these problems are dealt with that shows the strength of the marriage. I honestly could not believe where this conversation was headed, and I told the therapist to focus on my wife, not us. The therapist told me my inability to listen to logical reasoning might be a problem communication-wise. I did not disagree. My wife and I had a long talk during the drive home. She questioned if I felt emasculated due to her affair. Considering she had never asked me that before, I was genuinely surprised by the question. I answered yes. She shocked me by asking if I would feel better if I slept with another woman. I again told her I'm not nor will I have a revenge affair. She explained that she was talking about a trial separation, where I'll go out and get my mojo back. She will remain faithful and wait until I'm good and ready to come back to the marriage. I thought she was desperate before, but I found her proposal crazy. I asked her how that would benefit the marriage in any way for both people to be having affairs. 
She told me mine would not be an affair because we would be separated with conditions aligning with my freedom to see other people in place. I told her that's a huge risk on her part, and she responded that we're getting divorced anyway, so if this doesn't help us, at least I can see what the outside world has to offer. I obviously rejected the idea because it seemed way out of character for her to propose that. My wife has been strangely calm and patient these few weeks. She's like a different person from the crazy insecure one. Of course, I know not to trust her for my own sake. It's very difficult though. Even though she doesn't want it, she has been very generous in the divorce. I've read so many times where divorces get nasty, but not mine. It feels quite unreal to be in this situation. It's difficult to navigate. ETA. Let me make it clear, I am still going fully through with a divorce. I'm interested in hearing people's opinions on this. Update. Back again. Hello everyone. I have another update in this sorry state of my life. Before I get into that, I'd like to thank the people who continuously reached out to me and support. So, currently, my wife and I have decided to be civil and spend the holidays together as a family. It will be the last holiday that will ever happen, although my wife is still hoping otherwise. I wanted to do this for our kids' sake. I love my kids. Our divorce will be final in the middle of February, for those of you who were curious. We have split everything half and half, although she has been very generous on her side. Still don't know whether it's a tactic, and she might turn nasty later. But so far, she has been nice and confesses that it's because I have been a great husband and father, so she feels I should get a more than fair divorce considering what she has done. That is not to say that she will lose a lot out of the divorce, but I do get slightly more thanks to her. I have decided to stop going to therapy with her. It was giving her false hope and sending her mixed signals. She has confessed that she has a burning desire to be intimate with me. Throughout the time I have been absent here, and her understanding that I felt emasculated and undesirable thanks to her affair, she has been frequently, and I mean frequently, trying to engage me in sex. In all honesty, my wife hardly initiated sex before all this, so I found it a bit upsetting that she was doing it now. Over time, I grew to appreciate the fact that she saw this as a hang-up of mine and wanted to address it. I rejected her though, but she still persists, adamantly, stating that this has nothing to do with reconciliation and she just wants me to feel good and desired. I have cut off contact with other betrayed spouse for now because things were getting a little too personal for my liking. To the person who pointed out that I was having a revenge affair, I guess you were not way off. I didn't even realize it myself until other betrayed spouse confessed that she does want to try and see where this relationship between us goes. She has stated that she would wait for my divorce to be finalized before we tried anything. I was very confused and had no answer for her, so we have decided to take a break from being around each other until everything is sorted out. Other betrayed spouse is an attractive woman, but I don't know if I can return her feelings. I don't know how to handle that at all. Someone insinuated that being around other betrayed spouse was affecting her possible reconciliation with her husband. I assure you that I have nothing to do with her decision to leave the other man. She is done with him and that's all her. We do not talk badly about our spouses when we are around each other. The other man recently met me in person to apologize for everything that happened. He was always an arrogant guy, and this experience really humbled him. I did not accept his apology. Call me petty, but I don't give a crap about what the a-hole's going through. I have a question. Is it okay for me to have sex with my wife even if we're not reconciling? I have to admit, I miss having sex. I miss the intimacy and closeness of it all. My wife is eager and has been trying everything possible to initiate it. New lingerie, sexting, touching, letters, etc., and sometimes I find it hard to resist. She even threw away, burned, and replaced anything that had to do with the other man in my house without me asking her to, because, frankly, I just didn't care to know exactly where they had sex. It's not easy for me to switch off these feelings. Is this a trap? Am I being played? Before someone says kick her out of the house, I have already tried that, and I want her here because it's less of a hassle until the divorce is done. Ask an opinion of the community, and you'll get a response. A little lost student says, If you're done, you're done. Having sex with her will only confuse you further and give her more hope to reconcile. She's hanging by a thread with you, even though she's claiming she knows it won't help with anything. She knows she's losing you and she's doing everything possible to keep you. So if you're absolutely sure that you are finished with her, draw the line in the sand and say no. Have your holiday together for your children and that's it. Don't make it even messier divorce than it already is. Sex is more than just sex when it comes to separating couples. Update. It's finally dawned on me. Now. Rant. I thought I wasted all these years on a woman who was nothing but worthless, but she gave me great kids and great memories. These things I will never forget and will cherish as a man. But I finally understand I can do better than her, and I'm going to do better than her. I had a flood of people giving me advice on how to deal with this situation. I finally, finally understand that I deserve better than her. She screwed me over, 
put me down and made me feel less than when another man showed her attention. She literally invested her energy in another dude. I can't believe I'm finally coming to terms that I'm over her only now. Now. Now she does whatever it takes to keep me. Now she's investing her energy in us. Now she wants me to be happy when she didn't give a dang before. Now she wants to be this adventurous person in sex with me. The sex we had was never mind-blowing, but I liked it. Now I see how much I've missed out on. Throughout her text with other man, I know just the tip of the iceberg how graphic their trysts were. Now she wants to show me just how much she loves me, when admittedly, she has been quite lazy before. The lazy sex speaks volumes to me. Now she gives me a space and is happy and supportive of anything I do, when before it was all about giving her attention and providing for her at the same time. Now she values my boundaries and goes above and beyond to add them. Now she sees me as the king I wished she saw me as before, but no, I had to smack her off her pedestal first. Now she's the ideal woman, but it seems fleeting to me. Now she is completely transparent with me about everything. She is brutally honest too, even if it will upset me or embarrass herself. I don't think I've ever seen any woman with a constant look of shame on her face before. She wishes this affair never happened. I can see how much she kicks herself every day. I can see the hopelessness on her face when I'm just not receptive to anything she does. She looks so miserable, especially when she tries to hide it. It makes me hate myself sometimes, but to me, it's necessary. Why can't I see this as a positive thing? Why can't I judge her for her actions now? They show remorse, right? Many people have long-term affairs and come out even stronger than before, right? Why am I basing my decisions off emotion and not a place of mature objectification? Someone else will end up getting the better and improved version of her while I venture into another uncertain relationship. Why not fight for this when everything seems to point to something good in a future? There are the lines I've been given and I have one answer. I will not accept disrespect. Maybe I was willing to in the early stages of discovery, but I woke up from that quickly. This is to answer the people who have PM'd me and regularly asked about my situation. I'm going to enjoy this Christmas with my entire family and then move on from my wife. I decided to stop listening to the nonsense I created in my head to keep my wife's control over me and move on entirely from the idea of her. I will not be dating her or giving us another chance. We are over for good. I like to say that my wife isn't a villain and that is true. I want her to be happy as well, but it will never be with me. She has shown me that. I have called the other betrayed spouse today and offered her dinner after the holidays for her support when I absolutely hit rock bottom. She said she would love to. I know this stuff doesn't happen often, but we really supported each other throughout all of this and I owe her thanks. Before people start talking about how much I planned this with other betrayed spouse, I honestly did not. My emotions have been so screwed up this few years that the very thought of another woman never crossed my mind. And it's dinner, nothing else, unless we both want it. But the closer divorce gets, the more I realize I actually have options, and one option has been right there. What about the other man? I don't give a flying F about the dude. I do not think I will marry again, and I will tell this to any woman. Although my divorce hasn't been much of a hassle, I am losing a lot of money still. The whole idea of marriage just seems like a sham to me now. Sorry for being so cynical right now. I don't want this post to offend anyone, but I'm still jaded. I gave my best years to this woman, and I'm starting to realize how little I got back. Happy Holidays. You won't be hearing from me for a while. ETA, sorry for the typos. I'm on my mobile phone. ETA 2. Thank you for the gold star, whoever you are. Update. Officially divorced, plus the date with other betrayed spouse. TMI warning. It's been a long time coming. I did mention before that I would come back and update for the last time here. It's over. My ex and I have officially separated for good. It happened almost three weeks ago. For the better part of a few days after the fact, I grieved like I lost a loved one. I think it hit me extremely hard that my marriage failed so spectacularly. Never cried that hard ever since I discovered the affair in the first place. I raged a lot too. Definitely one of my lowest points. Everything has been organized for my ex, partially on my part for the kid's sake. She moved out of the house and I'm looking to buy her out of her part of it. She lives in an apartment now. Very big downgrade for her and it pretty much depresses her. She is still going to the therapist. Still invested in reading and studying infidelity. Don't know exactly why. We've had long talks leading to and after the divorce, minimal physical contact. I know I shouldn't entertain her now, but she's still the mother of my kids and I want us to be good co-parents. I'm nothing if not logical about the situation, largely thanks to this community and others. Of course, it's the same tune. She wants to reconcile and I think it's too risky for me to put myself in that situation again. Unfortunately, I'm not in the mood to give her that gift. This past weekend, I accompanied other betrayed spouse to dinner with no intention than enjoying each other's company and chatting. 
We talked about all sorts of things. Things got flirty between us, and I must admit, I was very reluctant to entertain the rapidly changing mood. Well, I guess I should say that the night ended in a very passionate way. Sorry for TMI. It was probably the most mind-blowing sex I've ever had. Oh, the betrayed spouse is very much a giver and spades above my ex. I did not intend for it to go that far, but other betrayed spouse was willing and I was as well. Learned quite a few more tricks in the sack. <laughs> First time I ever had someone that enthusiastic to please me and not the other way around. Guess I shouldn't call her other betrayed spouse anymore as she divorced her ex, but for privacy's sake, I'll just use that. I do not think we will take our relationship further, to be honest. I think the hormones and wine got the best of us that night. She would like to, but I am undecided. I need to sort myself out, emotionally, and I think she does as well. I feel very good though. People might not like hearing this, but the sex I had with other betrayed spouse really helped a lot with my residual self-esteem issues. I felt desired, alive, and finally understood what I was missing out on. I will never settle for robotic sex again. What was more satisfying was knowing that I was not cheating and did not lower my morals. All things considered, I'm very proud of how I handled all this crap. I wasn't perfect, but did the best I could. I'm probably coming out very lucky compared to my BHs. Even if I did lose a substantial amount of money in this process, but it was because I was willing to absorb advice and listen to people with experience instead of going in blind and hoping for the best. For that, I will be forever grateful to you guys. You and everyone who lent me an ear saved me from destroying my self-worth even further. Takeaways. Respect yourself. Never ever accept disrespect from anyone else, not even people closest to you. Everyone deserves a healthy, fulfilling relationship. Never settle for scraps from your partner. Every committed relationship should include a healthy and fulfilling sex life. If your partner is not giving his or her all to you, but did so before with someone else or in an affair, do not tolerate it. I'm not advocating sexual abuse or rape. Simply lay out your dissatisfaction. If your partner isn't willing to meet them, do not settle for boring sex unless you both agree on it. It is okay to walk away from that. Communicate, communicate, communicate. I cannot stress how super important that is. If you're ever betrayed, only you can truly heal yourself. It took a long time for me to understand this. There are many more, but that's all I can think of right now. I'll be available to answer comments that you may have, but in about a few hours from now, I'm done posting here for good and moving on with my life. Have a good one, everyone. Update. Things are meh right now. Hey guys, I've been getting a ton of emails from people who wanted to know how my situation is going. I've been purposely staying away from anything involving infidelity because I still get the trigger here and there. With that in mind, I'm still dealing with the trauma. I don't like to dwell too much on something, so I've been away from this site and others in a bid to move on. However, since there are so many people concerned about me, I will ease your worries and give you an update. I'm okay. No accidents. No poof. I'm off the face of the earth. I'm still in individual counseling. Other betrayed spouse is still my girlfriend. She managed to settle her case with the other man when it came to child custody and finances. She could have been vengeful and taken him to the cleaners, but instead handled the situation maturely. There is indeed some friction between the children over all of this. We are trying to deal with it as best as possible. We have had to start their therapy to make sure that they properly adjust and understand that the relationship of the betrayed spouse and I have is little bearing on them. But we do consider them important when it comes to how the situation is handled. This is extremely hard because not everyone is on board, my daughter. My ex and the other man do not like being around each other. I genuinely think both of them blame the other for how things turned out. And I'm not kidding here. There is tension when those two are in close proximity of each other. My ex still wants a second chance and is probably angry that other betrayed spouse is in the way of me seeing things clearly and not throwing away all we have indefinitely. This woman is so deluded, I'm genuinely worried about her antics. She tried something at a 4th of July party a friend of mine threw. I shut it down, but I guess not firmly enough. I did not believe the people that said she would be pining for me. But you guys were right. She wants to come crawling back in a bad way. Other betrayed spouse is letting me handle that, but she's getting sick of my ex too. Did I mention my ex hates other betrayed spouse with a passion? I really thought that my ex was changing herself for the better, but ever since I left her butt for someone else, she's been a train wreck. That's what I still don't get. I treated her better than I treated anyone else in my life, and she treated me like crap, but the moment I basically say F you, she's doing backflips trying to get my attention. I don't know whether it's something I should be angry about. Well, there you have it. Y'all can rest easy now. Final update. I know you guys were worried about me. Update. Hey all. Yes, I've seen your inboxes and chat requests. Sorry for not responding. I'm not active anymore here, but I'm very much aware that there are people who have been trying to check in on me and my situation. 
I'll ease your worries with this update. Be warned, this isn't a happily ever after here. Let's start off with the big elephant in the room. How are other betrayed spouse and I doing? Actually, fantastic. If I knew a woman like her was out there earlier, I would have hunted her down years ago. <laughs> All jokes aside, I have never had a stronger relationship with any woman besides her. Because my ex-wife put me through the ringer so much, I had little clue what a healthy relationship looked like. I still doubted myself. But other betrayed spouse has helped me through this and is a phenomenal partner. I'm very much in love with this woman. She has shown me time and time again that I mean a great deal to her and I feel the same way towards her. Nothing more than a girlfriend though. I'm still doubtful of a whole idea of marriage. We're still doing things privately and involving the children as little as possible in the whole relationship thing. But yes, the kids know we're dating. As for the kids, it was a bit of a rough start. Who am I kidding? But they are getting along really well now. I think it mostly has to do with us being heavily involved in their lives and making sure they had an ear to talk to whenever they had problems. Also, lots of therapy. My daughter and son love other betrayed spouse to bits. She has a way with kids. Her children like me a hell of a lot more than almost two years ago. Her youngest even started telling people I'm her stepdad at functions and outings I took her to, which greatly surprised me. I was worried she felt forced to see me that way, but she said she liked me a lot and it'll make her mom happy, so she's happy I'm her stepdad. You don't know how emotional I got after hearing that. Hit me like a ton of bricks from out of nowhere, but I did put up a valiant front. I like seeing my kids happily playing with other betrayed spouses. Although, they formed a united front to relentlessly tease my son, who is the only boy and youngest of the bunch. Yeah, no idea if I should laugh or cringe at that one. So how about my cheating ex-wife? We are on good terms. She has been working really hard, on her own, to repair her relationship with her daughter. And I was happy when my daughter told me she could find it in her heart to forgive her mother for what she did. They have been through a lot these years and have progressed well together. Even with that, I don't think my ex-wife has fully accepted that we are done as a couple. She still seems to be looking for or hinting for a second try. She's been going to the gym and still attending individual therapy. Overall, she seems much healthier now, but I don't really care. I've made peace with the past. It's her problem for not doing the same. She talks more with other betrayed spouse now, which is reciprocated, but other betrayed spouse regularly regards her with skepticism, which she should given all that's happened. The other man is a lost cause. I didn't realize what a mess the guy would be. All the money and no brains. He has a girlfriend now, but his kids despise her and are very open about it. It took me some time to see how full of himself the dude was. To be honest, I don't like his girlfriend either. She comes off as extremely materialistic, selfish, and callous towards the girls. So to conclude, we are doing better than okay. Don't get me wrong, I had my doubts if this was the right path, but with a lot of effort from the people involved, it turned out splendidly. No happily ever after, just really happy now. Well, there you have it. Y'all can rest easy now. A couple quick comments from the community. Beb252 says, I followed your story. This is a nice update. I was all in from the other betrayed spouse from the beginning. Vivid Investment says, OP, thank you for the update. I followed your story and have been pulling for all of you. You, the other betrayed spouse, and the kids have been through a long and emotionally traumatic journey and deserve the good things that are now in your lives. I am glad this worked out so well for all of you. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, OP. It has not been an easy one, but you have managed to be well-mannered and level-headed throughout. Additionally, it's great that you have been able to find happiness with the other betrayed spouse. It doesn't always work out this way, but the fact that you are able to find peace and happiness with each other is fantastic. The best thing you can do is take it one step at a time, live for the present, and practice gratitude for what you have. It's beautiful that this person was able to unlock something inside you and show you just how valuable you are as a human being and a lover. You deserve to be taken care of and, quite frankly, cherished. Other betrayed spouse helped you see your worth again, and I hope that both of you learned so much about yourselves while together. It's important to have people in our lives who want what's best for us and who bring out the best in us. It's also nice to hear that you and your ex are on good terms and that everything is okay with your children. Continue on this journey and continue to practice those morals and values which have guided you this far. Wishing you all the best as you carry forward. You deserve the very best. And as always, thank you for joining us today on our space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let us know what you thought of today's content in the comments below. Until next time.